So having discussed the specific titration that we're going to look at, I now want to turn you loose with a problem and see how you do with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the setup here, and then I'm going to give you as much time as you need to solve the problem. I'd recommend 15 to 20 minutes to get through the whole problem. I've pre-recorded the explanation to get from the initial data in the problem to the very end of the problem. So if you get stuck at any point during your work, what I'd recommend is you go to the next page in the module, look at the explanation, look at the discussion of strategy, and if you get stuck anywhere, see if that gets you over the hump and on to the next step. Then continue to do your work and check in with my other videos to see if you need hints or strategic assistance to get all the way to the end of the problem. Take about 15 minutes to try to work through the whole thing and then have a look at the full explanation for the problem. After we go through the problem, we'll have one more short lecture today. We're going to introduce how we deal with error in a typical analytical chemistry situation. Take the time and really think through your problem solving approach and how you use the stoichiometry to get the information given to the entire end of the problem. And this problem is going to deal with this potassium permanganate titration and it's going to cover a standardization step and then a titration for calcium using the standardized permanganate solution. So we're told that 0.3562 grams of sodium oxalate was dissolved in a 250 mil volumetric flask. If 10 mils of this solution requires 48.36 milliliters of aqueous potassium permanganate to be titrated to the endpoint, what is the potassium permanganate concentration in the original solution? All right, so this setup describes the standardization. We have an aqueous potassium permanganate solution that we don't know the concentration of. In the real world, we'd have a good idea of its approximate concentration because we prepared it. However, we need to use the primary standard, which is sodium oxalate, to establish the concentration of the permanganate in the titrant solution. So that's the standardization part. And the balanced chemical equation is once again given right here. Five moles of oxalic acid reacts with two moles of permanganate in the presence of six moles of proton to make two moles of manganese 2 plus, eight moles of water, and 10 moles of CO2. For the second part of the problem, we'll get to the actual titration analysis, where we're going to determine the, the concentration of calcium in a urine sample. So calcium ion in a 5 mil urine sample was precipitated with oxalate, isolated, and redissolved in acid. This digested solution required 16.17 mils of the standardized permanganate solution from the first part to reach the endpoint. What is the calcium concentration in the original urine sample? So take your time, work all the way through the end of this problem, and then check your answer against my explanation on the next slides. If you have any questions, as usual, I'll be live on Zoom during our usual class time. So if there was any logic or any strategy that you didn't get in terms of the explanation or is fuzzy to you when you solve the problem, please jump into the Zoom chat room and run your thoughts by me and we can talk about the chemistry behind the reaction. I'll see you in a little bit.